We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and we are both, full warning, exhausted. (laughs) It's been a really long week. (laughs) Yeah, to say the least. And weekend, and... I'm hot. It's hot here. I'm ready for winter. Yes. And I am just, I don't, the, the weather here is weird and I'm just always cold in a, my apartment and I'm usually just sitting under a blanket or wearing my comfy. Um, but yeah, I've also been working a lot of high school basketball this week and that just means standing in a very cold room yelling numbers at somebody who enters it into a computer. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a lot. And the fact yeah. that I still have a voice is shocking to me. You know I'm I'm like uncomfortable when I'm not wearing my hoodie or my big like crew neck sweatshirts like I'm in a crop t-shirt because I'm so hot right now my AC is not working so go team yeah we we can't have not AC working in Arizona I mean this time of year it's okay and sometimes I'll get texts from my building being like AC is unavailable and I'm like okay but it's 40 degrees out so I don't need it yeah it's I mean, honestly, it's not even that. It's like 83, 84 degrees, but still, it's just like an oven in my room. So Yeah, you also have humidity down there. We do have humidity. That is very, very true. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm very excited for this episode. Let's talk F1 Academy. Yes. Finally. They're back. They finally it's here. are back. They are one week off. They don't have, the, the, they don't have 24 races like <laughs> F1 does. They have a shorter schedule, but all of their races do fall on uh, F1 race weekends this year, different from last year. So their round one is in Saudi Arabia this weekend, along with F1. So because they're starting their season, we thought we would do a season preview or kind of just a recap on all of the new changes. Finally, all the drivers with seats um, and some of the new sponsors to the grid this year. So Catherine... I know you've been watching the changes a lot. Um, We did do some recap of the changes going into this season, but there's also been some more since we did our last F1 Academy podcast. So what are like kind of the big ones that you think we need to highlight or that you want to highlight? Um, I think the biggest one is that the weekend format is going to change. Last season, there were three races, um, two 30-minute races and a 20-minute sprint. Um, The sprint race has been eliminated. Formula what? One, take note. What? Wait, I'm sorry. They eliminated sprints? <laughs> what? It, if, Why is this such a novel idea in uh, F1 Academy? Why can't we do this in F1? I know, right? So um, so it's now down to two races each weekend. Um, there, um, There's a little, like, discrepancy in what I'm finding of um, information on what the weekend format is actually going to look at look like this year. Um, they've said in press releases that there will be two free practice sessions, a, quali- a qualifying session to set the grid for race one and then race two. Um, right now, looking at the schedule on the F1 Academy website, there's only one practice session ahead of quali on Thursday. Um, so very curious to see what that actually means. Um, for you know what we're actually what we're actually going to see in the schedule i'm sure once the the race weekends actually start happening we'll get a lot you know clearer of a picture um but so, they're gonna yeah go so then with that change and everything is this because i know like the scoring was different for all the racing is the scoring system the same or have they decided to change that um, the scoring system is basically the same. Um, the um, and they're using the same scoring system that we use in F one. So twenty five points for a win on down to to P ten. Um, the only difference is you get two points for pole position, but they also have the same rules for if you're outside of the top ten, you won't get fa- your fastest lap point, but you will get that point if you are in the top ten. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So I'm really curious to see what the weekend's actually going to look like because, you know, there's so many, you know, different things that we've been hearing. So who knows what's actually real? Yeah. And the racing, if I remember correctly, there's something with super license points, right? Or is that change? Okay. Yeah. So, um, as we know in the, you know, in the feeder series for, you know, 
F3, F2, um, based on your wins, you get a super license point and you need a certain number of super license points to be able to drive in F1 and also into the other, other feeder series. So for the F1 Academy new this year, the top five classified drivers in the final season standings will also get super license points toward being able to progress through the categories. So the winner is going to get 10 points. Um, P2 will get seven, P3 will get five, P4 will get three, and then P5 will get one. Um, so this is that that's one of the the like I think the strongest indicators that they're serious about moving women up through the series. Um, yeah. because 10 super license points is no small amount. No. And that's at the end of the season, right? The top five at the end of the season. Correct. So once okay. the the all once all race weekends are are, are done, uh, whoever is uh the F1 Academy champion will get those uh ten points. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And they're okay, if I remember correctly, seeing this on socials, they're doing something with like local drivers this year. Is that right? Yeah, so I think this is really interesting. So as we know, we have 15 drivers in the F1 Academy, um, but the F1 Academy is obviously really passionate about um, highlighting local racers and giving, you know, as many women as possible the opportunity to drive in a single seater car. So what they're doing this year is they're IDing local racers to give wildcard entries to the races. Um, so all five teams have three drivers, but one team will have four drivers, and that's Prima Racing. They're the defending champions. Um, they will have that wild card racer driving for that team on that weekend, which I think is so, kind of interesting. That is. I just find it interesting that they're giving the fourth driver to the defending champions. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know what it means for, like, you know, point scoring and, yeah, you know, I gonna, like, if, if that a happens. Local driver comes in and just – kills the weekend and wins everything like do those points all go to prima or how does the scoring work with the the wild card that's a great question that they have not answered yet so we'll we need see answers. <laughs> we we want to know things f1 academy tell us tell us all the things um but yeah i i think it's great to to be able to highlight you know local racers local talent especially because you know there's so much of motor racing that's really hard to to move up through the categories because you have to, you know, have a lot of money, be lucky with sponsors or be willing to move to Europe is basically like those are kind of like the three best, you know, ways to, to get into the sport. And in certain places, you don't have that same opportunity. So this is a really great way to highlight other, you know, racers around the world. And who's to say, like, one of these wildcard entries couldn't go into the F1 Academy in a year. In future season. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which one of the, the benefits to the F1 Academy is there's a two-year limit to how, you know, you, you can't be in, um, you know, formula, you know, the F1 Academy for 800 years like Fernando Alonso is in <laughs> F1. Um, you have, you, you either have a two-year limit or if you're um, in either the top two or the top three and you graduate to the next feeder series, which F1 Academy has a relationship with the Formula, Formula Regional um, Europe by Alpine Championship, RECA. Um, and that's where 2023 champion Marta Garcia and vice champion uh, Lena Buller have both moved on to. Um, so it's a you go, you get some experience, and then the goal is to move them into, you know, further feeder series to then move them further up um, the, you know, up the categories. It's fully been developed to be a springboard, not a landing. hundred percent. Exactly. Because yeah. like in thinking of it, having an all women series is amazing but if they can just be stagnant and sit there forever and they're not encouraged and other feeder series aren't encouraged to pick them up there's no you know super license points or anything I could see it kind of dying out and not being successful but by being set up to 100% be a springboard and you know move them into higher feeder series I think it's great the way that the relationship has kind of worked amongst this year. Exactly. And and there's also an age age requirement. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. It's like 16 to 
25, 26. So, you know, they want young drivers and they want young drivers to get experience in really good cars. Um, And this, you know, F1 Academy is a spec series. So unlike, you know, F1, these cars are all the same. So it's really about what the drivers can do to bring as much success as possible and how the driver is really connecting with the car, um, which is different from, you know, the, the really big series that we see like F1. It's highlighting the drivers, not the engineering. Exactly. Yeah, which I think is great. Yeah. I mean, they don't even have tire strategy to work out because they use the same, you know, single type of tire that they get from Pirelli, but there's, you know, there's no, is it, is it going to be the hard, medium or soft or what, car, you know, it, it's all the, the same tire and the same car. Yeah. And so we've been talking a little bit about like the F1, how they line up with F1. We talked about this in our previous podcast that we did over them, but just to kind of like recap the F1 team sponsorship versus teams versus F non F1 sponsors. Do we want to like go into detail there to kind of untie the web? <laughs> yeah. So the biggest news going into the 2024 20, season is that F1 teams are now sponsoring drivers. And, and this means bringing them into the driver academies. You know, we have the Red Bull Academy, the Williams Academy, the Mercedes Academy, um, all of these, you know, teams have, you know, young driver academies to bring, you know, nurture young drivers and bring them through the series. Obviously, the most notable on the the Formula One side is Oscar Piastri was an Alpine Academy driver forever. And then it brought in a lot of drama when he did not stay at Alpine. (laughs) Um, But the so so this is also bringing more female drivers into these male dominated academies with um, every F1 team sponsoring 10 of the drivers on the grid. Um, So they will be racing for F1 Academy teams like there are five teams and we'll go through who's what. Um, But they will be driving cars with the, you know, F1 team livery. So there's a driver driving a Red Bull livery. There's a driver driving a V-carb livery, a um, steak Sauber F1 kick something, lime green car and Aston Martin, etc. And then there's also, because there's only 10 F1 teams, but there's more F1 Academy drivers, there's also, like, what, five non-F1 sponsored sponsors? Yeah, so this is what I was really interested in. And one of the reasons why we waited so long to do this, you know, F1 Academy season preview is we didn't know who these other teams were going, these other sponsors were going to be. And we had a lot of questions about it. And I think we got some really fun and interesting answers. Um, Kind of most, not most notably, but one of them is Red Bull obviously has Red Bull Racing and Visa Cash App RB, um, whoever the heck they are. Um, But they also have a third driver on the F1 Academy grid. So one of the teams is just a Red Bull sponsored team um, because they have one more driver that is just from the Red Bull Academy. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah. That's awesome. And I thought, I honestly thought it would mean that other, you know, other teams were going to like sneak their way into getting an additional driver. Um, But instead we got um, three other really interesting sponsors and then one driver who is going to be representing the F1 Academy and driving an F1 Academy livery, um, which I think was done on purpose just to ensure that the F1 Academy also gets representation on the grid um, alongside the really cool sponsors that we're, we're seeing this season. I am really excited. Well, all three, but namely two of them um yeah three additional non-f1 sponsors are charlotte tilbury puma and tommy hilfiger yeah we talked about the charlotte tilbury livery on our uh live laugh livery podcast a little bit just because it's so different um yeah but the tommy hilfiger one just dropped like last week and i am obsessed it is so cool it's a hundred percent because of Susie wolf's ties to mercedes and ties to tommy hilfiger um which, but it works. It, but it works, and it's so cool. They're already kind of tied into the F1 world through um, Mercedes F1 team, and I I love these two. I love the Charlotte Tilbury sponsor. It's the first female-founded company to sponsor an, um, a car, which is really, really cool, sponsor a team, which I'm obsessed with. I love their livery. I love how they're just – sticking true to their brand um and I'm also excited for Puma as well Puma is very you know has a lot of ties to F1 
in general. So them coming into the F1 Academy and su- and supporter, supporting it as a sponsor, I think makes a lot of sense and is a really cool partnership as well. Yeah, I, th- I think it's great. We were talking right before we started recording about how I'm just like, the I'm, you know, I respect the Charlotte Tilbury car, um, but I also, it definitely is growing on me. I like the uniqueness um, and it, it really is just, it is, it is a women's car, which <laughs> this is a woman's sport. And this is also a sport that is, you know, very, you know, women like motorsport. And this is acknowledging that women like motorsport, um, which I think is, is important and incredibly valuable and is, is going to ultimately lead us to more equity down the line. Um, I also just I am obsessed cool with too. Tommy Hilfiger. Oh, I'm obsessed with Tommy Hilfiger. I think it fits in with like the brand of motorsport a hundred percent. So I well. love that Charlotte Tilbury though is like, showing young girls like you can like cars and motorsport and you can also love makeup and it's like Mm -hmm. you don't have to choose a side you can be everything so I appreciate and love the sponsorship so yeah it's you know it's not an either or thing um obviously we are two women who had very long careers working in you know sports which is a very male dominated field and we are you know continuing to be sports fans and now we're just inflicting our opinions about our you know favorite sports (laughs) to other people exactly Exactly. yeah (sighs) well I'm very excited to see the new liveries on the track this weekend and see everything. So now that we've kind of talked sponsorships, let's move into the actual teams. Cause again, like the sponsoring is one thing, the teams are another and the drivers. Mm -hmm. So like Catherine said, there are five teams, each having three drivers, one having four because of the wild card, but can you do like another re I know we've talked about this in the past, but can you do a recap of the teams? And the drivers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So these teams are actually well known, you know, brands within motorsport. Like these are just, you know, teams that were created for women. All of these teams also operate in F2, F3, and other junior categories. Um, some of these teams have gone through a rebrand over the last year, year and a half. Um, but we've got Prima Racing, they're the defending F1 Academy champions. They are expected to be stacked. Um And they've got a brand new lineup this year with Tina Hausman. She's driving for Aston Martin um, and she will be um, supervised and mentored by Jessica Hawkins, who is another um, Aston Martin Academy driver. She was the one who drove the Aston Martin car earlier last year. And everybody was really excited about, you know, her, her times and how she was able to, you know, really, you know, handle the car. So we've got her, we've got uh, Dorian Pan, um, who will be driving with Mercedes. She has some history in um, endurance racing. I think this is her first time in, um, single seater. And then um, Maya Woog is a new member of the Ferrari Academy. And so she will also be, you know, high expectations with the Tifosi. Oh, good Lord. Hope she uh, learns how to be her own strategist, <laughs> even though there's not a lot of strategy, but. Well, fortunately, she's her. got the Prima strategist uh, behind her. <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, so hopefully she'll be okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that, it's, it's a, it's a very strong lineup um, and, and it'll be interesting to see team, if they can repeat. Yeah. And this is also the team that will have that wild card. Correct. And we'll, we'll talk about the wild card entry once we get through all the, the team members. But the next team, um, and I have them in the order that they finished constructors wise last season. So finishing runner up in the championship last year was MP Motorsport. MP Motorsport is basically the Red Bull team this year um, <laughs> because they've got um, Emily, and not only is it the Red Bull team, but it is also the returning driver team um, because they've got three returning drivers on the grid. So they've got Emily DeHuse, um, who is, she's the Red Bull Academy driver. So the, the like generic Red Bull uh, driver. Yes. And then we've got the sisters, Hamda and Amna Alquabasi. Hamda Alquabasi, she finished um, P3 in the 2023 championship. She's the highest um, returning driver in the standings. She is driving for Red Bull Racing. And then Amna Alquabasi is driving for our friends at RB VCARB. Um, the JV RB team, <laughs> the 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 J, JV Red Bull team. So so they're all they're all part of the same academy. But it, it really didn't surprise me that the that you know a Red Bull was going to target the Alcobasi sisters, um, and b that they were going to find you know of all teams find a way to sneak in a third driver. 
Yeah. It just and makes it, sense. I mean, it, it makes sense, too, that they're just pretty much sponsoring a full team. Yeah. They, they're, they're taking, they're, they're taking their, their investment seriously, which is also really great to see. Like that's, yeah. that's what we want to have happen. Um, the next team is Roden Motorsport. They were formerly known as Roden Carlin throughout the series. Carlin has since, uh, departed from, from the, uh, Roden, um, partnership. They've got Lola Love and Foss in the Charlotte Tilbury car. So that's really fun. Love it. Um, they've also got returning drivers, um, Abby Pulling and Jess Edgar. Abby Pulling is a longtime Alpine driver. She finished fifth in the championship last year. And Jess Edgar is going to be the driver who is representing the F1 Academy and driving the F1 Academy livery, which I was looking at on Instagram this morning is actually a pretty, like, it's a solid livery if you want to, like, compare them to the, the other um, other cars. I mean, if we're going to have the the bright green Sauber, like, the the purple in the F1 Academy livery is, is nice. So we've talked a little bit about some returning drivers. So this two-year rule, these returning drivers this year will be bounced out at the end of the year then. Yes, they will. They will have to find some way, you know, some other, you know, motorsport series to move on through. Um, the F1 Academy is very serious about building really strong relationships with these other series. So we can see a lot of these drivers moving on. You know, last year, the, you know, goal for the champion was that just the champion was going to move on to, to Freca. And now it's the the champion, the vice champion. And I think also maybe the the third will have an opportunity this year. So I think the top, so it is really the top three kind Kind of know, really know where they're going um and it's really going to be a question of you know we have a lot of exiting drivers this year um and seeing where they end up as they as we move forward cool cool yeah. Um, not for, team number four is ART Grand Prix. Um, and most notably is Bianca Bustamante. She was the first driver last year to be announced as an Academy driver and with this partnership with the F1 Academy and the F1 teams. So she's driving um, for McLaren, a uh, member of the McLaren Driver Academy. Um, I think that that was a really you know cool, fun choice. Um, then we've also got Aurelia Nobels. She's driving the Puma car. Um, and and Leah Block is our American driver who is driving for Williams. So that's very exciting. The lone is she she's the lone American, right? Um, no, there is another American on the grid. I it's Chloe Chambers as well. Okay. She's driving for Compost. Um, and she is um, being wrapped by Haas. And then we've also got Carrie Schreiner. She's gonna be in the Lime Green Sauber. Um, and then God Nerea Marty. <laughs> Yeah. And then we've got Norea Marti, who is going to be driving in the Tommy Hilfiger car. So cool. She finished P4 in the championship last year. I think she has my favorite livery on any car ever. I'm obsessed. Yeah. I... It's it's so Tommy Hilfiger. And like, it is. Tommy Hilfiger just has a great eye for design. Obviously, he's still got the contract with the Olympic teams um, and Team USA. And it's just like, always really fun to see what they come out with um and to this to see it on an f1 car is just another really cool thing that we've got here yeah no i'm i'm very very excited it i feel like it was a it's like an obvious one but it was totally out of left field you know what i mean like when i saw it I was yeah like, oh my god this makes so much sense but i never would have guessed this brand in a million years because we really as as you know f1 fans we really just associate tommy hilfiger with uh, the Mercedes drivers and a Mercedes right. sponsorship. Um, and then to, to remember, oh yeah, Susie Wolf Susie has Wolf. been, you know, with Mercedes forever before yeah. join, you know, before becoming managing director of the F1 Academy, she has these relationships. Of course, she's also going to, you know, see if Tommy Hilfiger wants to sponsor an F1 Academy car. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, I could talk good things about Susie all day long. Um, but I think she's done a really good job with, you know, collecting sponsors and, and putting all this together. Running yeah, but be between, you know, all of the things that, that she's been able to accomplish with the Academy this year, all of the um, ways that the F1 Academy has grown and the sponsorships that they've brought in and the relevance that they've brought in um, is is really huge. And I just want to take a pause real quick because Caitlin Clark just took a technical foul free throw um, to become the NCAA uh, all-time scoring leader. Um, so that has happened. I have The game is on my television right behind Catherine, me. Um, Catherine can't not watch sports while we're talking about sports. 
Correct. I always have something sports related on the television. Um, and um, Caitlin Clark needed 18 points and she got 18 points and she she's beaten uh, Pistol Pete's 54 year old record, um, which is really freaking cool. Congratulations, even though you're a, an Iowa Hawkeye. Yes. Anyways, <laughs> American University sports, the uh, rivalries run deep. So they do. But thank you for probably beating Ohio State. So, well, <laughs> they, they are up by nine at half. Okay. Well, getting back on track. <laughs> yes. Huge departure <laughs> in the gravel. <laughs> um, okay. Can we please talk about the wild card entry? Because I know I brought it up like a thousand times. We kind of touched on it, but I think it's like super interesting that they're just going to pick a random person to drive one race a year who's the local to the area local to the country that they're racing in um to you know increase the the women who have experience driving in competitive single seater cars so for yes. Saudi Arabia who is the wild card entry um, so this is Rima Jafali, um, and she is most notably the first Saudi Arabian woman to compete in an international racing event in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Um, so that's uh, that happened in 2019. So that's kind of a big deal. Um, this, I think, is going to be her first time in single seater. Um, but I mean, she's founded her own motorsport team with the goal to improve Saudi Arabian access and participation in motorsports. So she's doing a lot of really cool things. So I think that they, they really nailed the we want to showcase somebody who is making great efforts in motorsport, who is a yeah. local to the place that they're racing. And what a perfect pick. Yeah, I mean, I don't know a lot about the local Saudi Arabia women motorsport racing. Uh, I don't have a lot of names off the top of my head, but this seems like a natural perfect fit. Um, exactly. There's other women out there doing, you know, great things for motorsport as well, but she's a great, you know, representation for this first wild card. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how the the wild card process really shakes out. Obviously, we said earlier that we don't know how it's going to work if they score, what that means for Prema, or if this is going to allow Prema to like run away with the championship again. Um, it's probably going to be one of those like non scoring um, participants, which is something that we see really you know, is very common in in motorsport. You'll have you know sometimes people will come in for a wild card entry or a showcase entry, um, and no matter where they finish, they you know, they're non-scoring. Um, so that's probably how it's going to shake out here. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense if they're not going to have a season. Yeah. And it wouldn't make sense for Prima to just get all the points for these wild cards. So I think it's a, yeah, exactly. probably how it'll work. Um, so my big question for you <laughs> that we, we uh, wrestle with constantly um, are Continue we even able to. to watch this? <laughs> Can we watch the it? answer? <laughs> the answer right now is God, I hope so. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen anything officially from the F1 Academy socials or the F1 Academy website on how to watch. Um, hopefully, by the time this episode comes out on Tuesday, um, we will have heard by then, and this will be old news. Um, but it should be available on F1 TV, which means that I will be able to watch it on my handy-dandy iPad. Um, so, uh, but... That was, you know, one of the biggest frustrations last year was that we couldn't, we, the only one we could watch was the season finale, the finale at Kota, um, because that was actually broadcast on TV. I'm sure that they're still working on nailing down any broadcast deals, but it makes sense that it would be available on F1 TV at minimum. And it, it would be a great disappointment if it's not available live. Yeah, I agree. I think the access to the public is the big thing that they're missing the buy-in because if we can't watch yeah. it and we can't support it, then it's really hard to be a fan of it and exactly. help it grow. So, um, and also with which is what eyes, we want comes more sponsorship, comes more money, and that's how you you know become successful. So, hopefully, exactly. they will increase the access to watching it live. Of course, um, we look forward to watching it and keeping track and keeping tabs this season. Like we said in the top of the episode, they are going to fall on F1 weekend. So we will be doing recaps on F1 Academy in our recap episodes so that we can all stay on top of the F1 Academy and their season and how it's progressing, even if 
we don't actually get to watch it. So we will provide you yes. with the updates if you're not able to see it. So you're welcome. Yes. <laughs> yes. And also timing wise, um, time zones means I'll probably be watching a lot of replays, but it's okay. <laughs> I can live with replays. As long as I can watch the the race itself in full in some way, even if it is by the replay, I'm happy. Yeah. This is a super random thought, but I really want to see what the Charlotte Tilbury and Tommy Hilfiger merch looks like. Oh my God. Yes. I would like there to be merch. I would, I would invest in Academy merch. Hopefully it's cheaper than a $650 sweatshirt. (laughs) Or (laughs) is it $50 (laughs) in shipping for a $40 shirt that I'm still (laughs) mad about? You got to hit them when it's like the free shipping days. That's the way you got to do it. Yeah, I got, I got to keep an eye on it. Okay, free shipping days, Esteban Ocon. I want that SD Bestie shirt. I want it. I don't know if you really want to be wearing an SD Bestie shirt this year, though. I mean, clearly he they're, they're struggling, but that shirt is, is, is definitely something I would wear, mostly because it's it black. Really, I know, I know, I know. I know, if you watch I'm not back at the all shipping. of our, if you watch back all of our pods, you're in like a black shirt every single time, and I'm in a different sweatshirt every single time. Every single time. <laughs> Yes. I just bring the color to the podcast. And um, I am consistent and also probably wearing the same shirt in like <laughs> most of the episodes. I just, I'm I'm just very consistent and very lazy. It's fine. It happens. I uh most of the time I just grab a sweatshirt that's sitting right next to my bed. So cat's out of Fair. the bag. <laughs> Spoiler um, alert. <laughs> well, with that. We are very excited for the first race of the F1 Academy season. It is this weekend in Saudi Arabia. Up next for us, we will have our F1 Saudi Arabia preview episode coming out on Thursday. So it is another Saturday race. Our episode will come out the morning that free practices start. Depending on your time zone, it is what it is. But that has been our F1 Academy preseason update. That's been the podcast. Thanks for going off track with us, guys.